Over the past few months, we've shared a series of films as part of our Green Your Neighbourhood campaign, showing how anyone can create or enhance their local green space. From growing your own food to creating habitats for wildlife, we've covered so much. All of the community groups we've worked with have been on their own journeys and have so much knowledge to share. So let's hear from some of the inspiring individuals who've made a real difference in their local green space for their community and for wildlife. Oh wow, this project has evolved and changed over the last several months. Biggest change is having an open garden where we've invited people of all ages to come do a bit of planting, allow children to get their hands in the soil, to see the garden as a space they can explore, enjoy, play games and just enjoy being in the garden. The other thing that we've done is to create the raised beds. We've installed the water butts and we've got a really good compost system going. Improvements that we've made to the garden to help to attract wildlife and we've put in a dead hedge which is basically just old twigs and, and branches all twined together but it makes a lovely habitat. We're sort of leaving the back section of the garden to let the grass grow really really long and encourage all the wildflowers to be there. We've also planted up in one of our other beds over there lots of annual flowers so it's gonna be really really pretty so it looks nice for people coming to enjoy the garden but also you know, a magnet for all these pollinators as well. We've done some weeding, we got them planting fruit, vegetables, herbs and some painting of some bug hotels and uh, bird boxes. We've done some litter picking and again it's showing them if you've dropped your litter we need you to pick it up. We've been able to get some wildflower seeds so again it just looks nice for, for the residents and for them really to take pride in where they live. I struggle with mental health and I just come here for a chat. I do, I do a bit of gardening but it's not you don't have to garden it's for the community. I don't get out very much and I've been pretty much isolated. I really enjoy it because I get to come outside and spend time gardening and feeling useful so I'm getting um, some social interaction without it being overwhelming. If there's somebody that's struggling with their mental health I would encourage them to reach out and maybe put a post on a community social media page to ask where there's outside space and where there's some supported space so that you can go and interact with people if you want to but also be left alone in nature if you want to as well so you've got the best of both worlds. People are, are understanding more and more the importance of not just being able to just nip down to the shop, but actually growing your own. Climate change is very real. We have to be more adept at managing our resources, growing our own food. It's going to be vital that we all have that knowledge. So that nature connectedness is, is critical from a sustainability point of view, from a nutrition point of view, from a mental health point of view. You know, that physical and mental well-being is key. Being here, I'm learning about different kinds of plants, which is encouraging me to grow things at home myself. And it's coming to a time as well where food's getting really expensive and being able to feed yourself and do it in a healthy way. It gives me a sense of um, achievement that I've planted something from seed, nurtured it, watched it grow. Garden is free, nature's free. It's all these kind of unused spaces where it's just grass or it's just overgrown. We can just plant it up with fruit and vegetables. We don't need to be relying on, on kind of money. The cost of living is hard, people are struggling, people need to eat. We can utilise these spaces, we can grow fruit and vegetables free. We can create teams of volunteers going out to these spaces and kind of managing that.
The benefits of wildlife-friendly gardening, it's about you living alongside and enjoying nature to its max by sharing that space with wildlife. There's a great pleasure to be had from that. But there's also a real sustainable benefits to gardening with wildlife. I mean, a simple example would be having frogs in a the pond. They're going to keep down your slug and snail population. If you encourage them into your garden, that's going to help reduce the slugs and enable you to have better crops. For anybody starting out from scratch, I guess the advice I would give is just to take it slowly, not to think you've got to do everything all at once. It might be that we've got a little bit of a, a space at the back of where you work or at the side of and the community space and actually we could start with just a little bit and let's plant it up and see what grows that year and if people are enthusiastic and get stuck in then next year we'll do a little bit more and a little bit more. Choose an area that you want to grow on, get that well clear of the invasive weeds so you can grow in that area. Think carefully about what you want to grow but start small and build up from there. So for wildlife gardening, the main things that we're interested in are things like providing food, shelter, nesting materials, hiding places and water. And that can be done in so many different ways. We can have lots of different wild spaces or we can be really organised about it or we can be really creative and make something that's really beautiful. We're conditioned to sort of think that um, to be a good gardener it's got to be very neat and tidy and manicured but actually and if you want to garden for wildlife, you do have to kind of embrace the, the wildness of things, which I think is actually takes the pressure off a little bit. Just try and look after your wildlife space in line with nature. In our garden areas, we try and find alternatives to using pesticides as much as possible. Um, we try and use our own compost that we've made or buy peat-free compost. Those sorts of practices that, that look after the sustainability of your garden too. The garden is very forgiving. If something doesn't make it, you get another chance. You can sow it again, you can try again next year. It's, it's not a one-hit thing. You've got to get it right or you can never do it ever again. You learn as you go and you will make mistakes, but it's OK because nature keeps growing, so you get, you get to have another chance. Talk to your neighbours, talk to the surrounding community. They will be full of advice, local knowledge, what works well, what doesn't work well. They'll know about your soil. They'll know about the, the pigeons or the weather or you know what's coming in and, and might affect your crops and your growing. Get your community involved if you're on a community space, have some work days, have some fun parties. You can clear a lot of ground and you can plant a lot of plants if you've got that people power, if you've got a few people that can come together and help you with that. So if you'd like to have a garden space that's used by the community, I would say you don't need much money but you do need to be passionate about it and to start talking about it with people. Um, maybe ask for some plants, maybe ask for an extra pair of hands to help build a raised bed. But really, essentially, you sow your seed in the ground, you put on the kettle and have a cup of tea, and that is, that's your starting point. And you grow with the people that come in. Seriously, that is, that's all you need, and nature does the rest. People are generally, um, who like gardening, are generally very generous people. So uh, another piece of advice would be to yeah, accept that how people have got spare plants or they want to give even if it's just half an hour to come and do some weeding, you know, brilliant. And then you might have met somebody who will continue to want to be involved in the future. So I think the more that you spread the word and you encourage people, the more people get involved and it just kind of grows organically. If anyone wanting to get more involved in their community garden, um, just, just go out and do it. Um, you don't need to... Uh, you don't need to know a lot about gardening. You don't need to have to work all the time. You can just go there, go for a copper, have a biscuit, have a chat, plant some seeds. Being in a council property, you do get stereotyped. And it's a case of, well, it's council property, why should I bother? But there's still that sense of pride that I want to have in my neighbourhood, in where I live. Um, and to make that happen, it's like somebody's got to take sort of that first step. So if you are a council tenant, you can go to your local council authority. They will probably have a team there that would be able to help. It's good for them and obviously it's good for us. It's good for the environment to just try and bring this wildlife and just make it a nicer, better place, yeah. Well, I just want people to grow, go out to community gardens and plant. 
meet new people, build that community network, share food, support each other, share tools, kind of grow together. Because we've got so much space we can utilise. Pressure the council, we're like, yo, can we plant this here? Can we plant that there? And grow food in abundance. We have the potential. But the most important bit is just enjoy it. You will have failures, I have failures. Every year there's some stuff. I've grew some sweet corn, it's a disaster. It hasn't made it to the plot, you see. That's fine, it doesn't matter. It cost me a few seeds. So enjoy your space. Don't aim for perfection. Take time to enjoy that moment, to enjoy your space with the wildlife in your garden. Our green spaces are more important now than ever. To support wildlife, to provide food security in a climate and cost of living crisis, and to support our physical health, mental health and well-being. In a moment, I'm gonna share with you some beautiful words from one of the community members we've worked with. But first, I'd like to say thank you for joining us in celebrating the finale of our Green Your Neighbourhood campaign. We'd absolutely love to hear your feedback, so please fill out the survey which we've linked to below. And if you have already been on your own green space journey, please share your stories, your tips, your advice in the comments, because your story could be the inspiration someone needs to start their own green project. We believe everyone should have easy access to nature. So I hope these stories have inspired you to take action in your own community, because together we can create a greener, healthier and more connected world. When things are difficult and when things aren't going well around, whether that's on a national, a global or a personal level, just need to step out into a garden, step into nature, go for a walk, and you're reminded that nature carries on, the cycle of life keeps going, whatever time of year, um, there's flowers growing up through concrete, nature doesn't stop, nature has power, and that power is life-giving and refreshing and affirmative and restorative. That's just an abundance of of wellness right there, accessible to all of us, whether we've got a window box or whether we've got a huge garden, whether we live by a river or a lake, or whether we live in a city and we can just access a garden, whether it's attached to a library, a health center or a church, just find it and uh, stand there and just see what's all around.